Hello, glad to have you here. We're going to be working with dilations in this video and a couple of goals. One of the goals is that you'll be able to find the scale factor of a dilation and you'll be able to use it to find unknown measures such as side lengths and angle measures. And the second goal is that you will learn how to use scalar multiplication that involves matrices in order to perform dilations in a coordinate plane. All right, so dilations is our focus. Let's talk about what dilations are to begin. This is the last type of transformation that we're learning. And a dilation, as you might be familiar with, is when you're changing the size of an object. It's kind of like when your pupils are get dilated, they get larger or they get smaller. All right, so a dilation is when a figure gets enlarged or reduced in size. And I've got a couple of pictures of dilations here. You see this picture with the tigers right here where this is the original tiger and then what happens is he kind of get blown he, he gets blown up or enlarged to make this tiger right there and then we've got this star which is being reduced in size quite a lot all right so there's a reduction of it there's another reduction there's another reduction there's another reduction another reduction so we keep reducing the size of that star those are all examples of dilations now, one thing that I need to make sure we stress here is that a dilation is not an isometry. In the rest of the chapter, we've been talking about isometries, and those were transformations in which the pre-image and image were congruent. But clearly, the pre-image and the image are not congruent here. All right, the pre-image being the outer star, we'll say for this one, image being the inner star, those are not congruent, are they? In dilations, the pre-image and image are similar figures. All right, now, if we want a definition for a dilation, I'll just kind of paraphrase one right here or give you a description really more than it is a definition. But a dilation is an enlargement or reduction of a figure in a point. Or rather than saying an enlargement or reduction of a figure in a point, let me say centered about a point. Now, let me explain that a little bit. You're familiar with how a camera works, aren't you? With a camera, it's got a focus and then a lens, and you've got the thing that you're taking a picture of. Okay, well, that focus can be what you would call the center of a dilation. Everything focuses on that one point. And in this dilation here with the two tigers, this would be the focal point, so to speak. All the light rays, if you will, trickle down to that same point. And the way the dilation works, then, is you take the points that are from the original figure and you draw a line from the center of the dilation through those points and then simply the images of each of those points move along that particular line. So you can see for instance that this point right here is where the tiger's nose was and then in the dilation the image of the tiger's nose also ended up about that line right here. Okay, and if you look at the tiger's toe down here, in the dilation, we just drew a line from the center through that toe, and then the image of the toe was also on that line. Okay, so you can see how every point and its image lie on the same line that connects to the center of the dilation. All right. I'll go a little more into detail on that idea here in just a moment. Let me go back to something we said a moment ago. Whenever you have a dilation, you can always say that the image is similar to the pre-image, which is to say that they're not congruent to one another, but they are proportional to one another. And since the images are similar to one another, you can say there's a scale factor in, of being able to compare the image, the dimensions of the image, with the dimensions of the pre-image. All right. Now, I said a dilation can be an enlargement or a reduction. I've given you an example of each. Let's contrast those two. One of the things that you're going to get used to doing is using the letter K to represent a scale factor whenever you're referring to dilations. All right. And when you have an enlargement, the scale factor is always going to be greater than 1. Now, why is that? Well, what the scale factor K does is it expresses the ratio between the dimensions of the image and the dimensions 
of the pre-image. Now, in an enlargement, the dimensions of the image would be larger than the dimensions of the pre-image because you would have blown up the figure, just like with this tiger, the image was larger than the pre-image, right? And so if the image is larger than the pre-image, then the scale factor is going to have to be greater than 1. And in a reduction, such as we're experiencing with this star being reduced to become this star, we can say that the scale factor has to be less than 1, has to be between 0 and 1 is what I'm going to write. Now, scale factor will never be negative, and that's why I'm saying that it has to be greater than 0. But if it is between 0 and 1, if it's something like 4 fifths, for instance, then what's going to happen is you're going to have a reduction. Okay. Now, that's one fact about enlargements is that the scale factor is greater than 1. Another fact about an enlargement is that the image is always further from the center of the dilation than the pre-image is. Now, in order to illustrate that, let me refer to the enlargement of the tiger that you see right here. And I'm going to name some of the points that I've already kind of labeled. Let's say that the center is going to be called point C. And let's say that the original tiger's nose is going to be point N. And the original tiger's toe is going to be point T. And so the image of the tiger's nose would be N prime. And the image of the tiger's toe would be T prime. And what I'm telling you is that the distance from the center C to each of these two image points is going to be further than the distance from C to the original pre-image points. So, for instance, C to T prime would be greater than C to T. Whereas, let's say we look at this reduction over here. The center of this dilation turns out to be the very center of the star that you see. So let's put that right there. And then let's pick a point on our pre-image, just any tip of the star. Let's go for this one over here. Why not? And then let's pick a corresponding point on a smaller star, let's say the innermost star, right there. Now, remember, one of the things that has to be true is that if you draw a line from the center to the pre-image, well, then the image would be on the same line that connects the two. The image, pre-image, and center always have to be collinear with one another. And if I were to name those same points similarly, all right, call the center C, call the image, let's say, point T for tip of the star, and then the, oh, sorry, that's a pre-image, and then the image, we'll call this corresponding point T prime. Well, in that case, in a reduction, turns out that the image is always closer to the center than the pre-image is. And so we could do the opposite. We could say CT prime is less than CT. And then regardless of whether it's an enlargement or a reduction, the next thing that I'm going to say is true. If you wanted to find out what the scale factor is, what you can do is you can use the ratio between the, how far the image is from the center and how far the pre-image is from the center. In fact, the ratio of CT prime to CT in each of these is equal to the scale factor. All right? Or another way that you can find the scale factor is you can use corresponding parts of the similar figures created. So for instance, if I were looking at the tiger over here and I connected his nose with his toe and I did the same thing for the enlarged version, the ratio between the distance from the larger tiger's nose to toe compared with the smaller tiger's nose to toe would be equal to the scale factor. Now you'll see this stuff play out more later on, but ultimately the point I'm trying to make about the scale factor is that you always make a ratio between the inches of the image compared to the corresponding dimensions of the pre-image, and that's it. Now let's put this stuff into practice first on a coordinate plane. I'll tell you what. A small amount I need to teach you before we put that into practice in this, the coordinate plane. And that small thing that I need to teach you is something called scalar multiplication. Now, we didn't learn matrix multiplication. That was earlier in the chapter. We skipped it. But we are going to learn scalar multiplication, which isn't the, quite the same as matrix multiplication. In scalar multiplication, what you're doing is you're multiplying a real number by a matrix instead of multiplying a matrix by a matrix. Okay, And it turns out to be very, very simple to multiply a real number by a matrix.
all you need to do, it's kind of like distributive property, is you multiply each element in the matrix by that scale factor, essentially. That's the way we're going to think of it, because that's what it's going to be whenever we're talking about um, dilations, right? So, to multiply 7 times this matrix, I'll do 7 times 10. I'll do 7 times 2. Then I'll do 7 times 1 seventh, which is just 1. And I'll do 7 times negative 2 sevenths, which is negative 2. That's it. That's scalar multiplication. And you notice that the dimensions of the answer end up to correspond with the dimensions of the matrix that you multiplied by the real number. All right? So we're, that was a 2 by 2 matrix here. We already know we're going to get a, three, a 2 by 3 matrix for the product of our scalar multiplication here. And we're just going to multiply 2 thirds times each element. 2 thirds of negative 6 is negative 4. 2 thirds of negative 5 would be negative 10 thirds. And 2 thirds of 3 would be 2. Then 2 thirds of 0 is 0. 2 thirds of negative 1 is negative 2 thirds. And 2 thirds of 12 is 8. All right, that's scalar multiplication. And the reason why I bring that up is that whenever you're trying to perform dilations in a coordinate plane, often what we're going to do is we're going to look at the coordinates of the pre image in matrix form, as you see right here. And simply all we're going to do is we're going to multiply each of the coordinates in that matrix by a scale factor. Now the directions here are telling me to find the image matrix for the polygon after a dilation that's centered at the origin. Our dilations are always going to be centered at the origin, okay, whenever we're working with a coordinate plane, and with the given scale factor, and then we're going to graph the image. And that'll be kind of see that the scale factor thing worked out. All right, so we're going to multiply five halves by the pre-image matrix. And the result of that multiplication will be the image matrix A prime, B prime, and C prime. All right, so you've seen how to do this scalar multiplication. Five halves times four is 20 halves, or 10. Five halves times negative one is negative five halves, so negative two and a half. Five halves times zero, of course, is zero. All right, and then five halves times two is five. And then we're going to have a zero, and then we'll have a negative five right there. Now, let me go ahead and graph the image matrix. All right, there's my A prime at 10, 5. B prime at negative 5 halves, 0, or negative 2 and a half. You see that's between negative 2 and negative 3, right? Between negative 2 and negative 3. And then here's C prime. And there's our dilation. Happened to be an enlargement. And we knew it was going to be an enlargement because the scale factor was greater than 1. It was 2 and a half, right? And so really what that scale factor tells you, two things. It tells you that all the sides of the image are 2 and a half times their corresponding sides in the pre-image. And it tells you that every vertex of the image is 2 and a half times as far away from the center of the dilation, which is the origin, as its corresponding pre-image point was. Now I'm going to illustrate each of those things once. Let's say we check out the distance from the center to point C prime. Now that distance would be O C prime if I use O as the origin, because that is the center of the dilation, right? And that happens to be equal to 5. And then if I compare that with the distance from the origin to the pre-image of point C prime, then, well, that happens to be two units, right? Zero to negative two is two. And if I make a ratio out of those two things, the ratio of OC prime to OC would equal five halves. That's equal to the scale factor, right? Okay, so the distance, the scale factor represents the ratio between how far an image point is from the center compared with how far a pre-image point is from the center in a dilation. And then, secondly, let's pick a pair of corresponding sides and find their distances. Let's say we pick the shorter side on each triangle. Let's compare B prime C prime with B C. Now I'm going to use the distance formula to find each of those pairs of distances, but I'm not going to show the work for that. I trust that you know how to use the distance formula to find the answers that I'm about to get. Now, the distance from B prime to C prime is the square root of 31.25. The distance from B to C is the square root of 5. 
And if you make a ratio of that, the image's side compared with its corresponding pre-image side by dividing, you're going to find out, just use your calculator for this, it's equal to 2.5, which is a 5 to 2 ratio, right? So the scale factor also tells you the ratios between the side lengths of the image compared with their corresponding side lengths for the pre-image, as I've illustrated there. All right, now I was going to go through another problem where you're going to graph the image of a figure after a dilation, but we've kind of gone longer on time than I expected, and you saw all you have to do really is multiply each of these coordinates by whatever the scale factor is, and that's that. So I'm not going to do that example, but let's move on to a couple other items that I want to work with here. All right, you're also going to be given pictures like this that look super confusing because you got segments of all different types of colors and this is going to represent a dilation and what the directions are going to tell you to do is to find the scale factor and they're going to tell you to indicate whether the dilation is an enlargement or a reduction and then they're going to say find the value of well normally they'll give you one variable but I'm going to give you two variables in order to find the value for. All right. Now, this turns out to be a very simple problem once you understand what the problem is showing you. Now, what we have here is a dilation in which the blue triangle here is the pre-image. And I can tell that that's a pre-image because of the prime notation. I can see that it's triangle PQR, whereas the red triangle, the larger one, is P prime, Q prime, R prime. So clearly it's the image of the blue triangle, right? And that dilation is centered about point C. Now, you've seen a dilation way back here with the tiger where the center of dilation was outside of both of the figures, so to speak. And you've seen a dilation like here in the star where the center of dilation was inside of the figure. And this is another example of that where the center of the dilation is inside the figure. Now, what these black segments represent, these are just us showing that the center of the dilation is collinear with a pre-image and its image. So we just connected the furthest of those to the center and they all three lie on the same line. And so CR is just how far is point R from the center and then CR prime is just how far is the image of point R from the center of the dilation. Okay, there you go. Hopefully you kind of understand what the different colors and the different pictures in this figure are. Now, without even figuring out the scale factor, we can actually already tell whether the dilation is an enlargement or a reduction, because isn't the image clearly larger than the pre-image? And each of its vertices are further away from the center than the vertices for the image as, for the pre-image as well. So it's a dilation. Sorry, it's an enlargement, not just a dilation. And then to find the scale factor, we've got to do one of two different things. We've either got to pair uh, to compare, make a ratio of a pair of corresponding sides, such as maybe segment P prime, R prime, and segment P, R. But that wouldn't be possible because we only know one of their distances, right? We know P prime, Q prime, but we do, uh, so we don't know P prime, Q prime, even though we do know P, Q. And if you can't compare corresponding sides for the image and pre-image, then what you do is you compare how far the image is from the center with how far the pre-image is for a center for any of these vertices. And that we're going to be able to do. What we're going to do is we're going to be able to notice how far is P prime from the center C, and we can already see how far P is from C. And we're going to make a ratio out of those two things. So the scale factor is going to be equal to the distance from the center to P prime divided by the distance from C to P. And the distance from C to P prime would be this 10 plus the 2, correct? So that would be 12. And the distance from C to P is, oh, you know what? The 10 was, I color-coded this for a reason. My fault, that one with the blue segment. I'm at the 8 plus 2, and 8 plus 2 is 10. And then the distance from C to P is 8. And so that tells me that the scale factor is 5 to 4. Now, always do the image over the pre-image, as I've said a couple times already, and that will get you the correct scale factor. It was an enlargement, right? And our scale factor was greater than 1. That's a good sign. Okay. Now, as far as how do we find the values of the variables? Well, you can simply use the scale factor to figure that out. If I'm trying to find the value of x, for instance, I know that the ratio of the image to the pre-image is 5 to 4. 
So that means that I can say x over 10, image over preimage, equals 5 over 4. And then I can just cross multiply, get 4x equals 50. And then x would be 12.5. 25 halves if you, if you prefer. Okay. Then to find the value of y, I'm also making a ratio of the image to the pre-image, just comparing corresponding sides of the two triangles here, it turns out, the way you did way back in the similar triangle chapter. And we can say then that that is 15 is to y, as 5 is to 4. And so you get 5y equals 60, so y is equal to 12. There you go. So that's how you find the scale factor, and that's how you use it to find missing dimensions in a dilation. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there, and hopefully that'll be good enough for you to understand what you're doing in this section. And the things that you didn't understand, we'll pick those up in class and take those ideas a little bit further. Thanks for your attention, guys. Good luck with all these problems. See you later.